Hey everybody, Chief Meteorologist Brad Penovich here. Let's talk about our tropical subtropical setup off the southeast coast. Not a really strong system, but it is going to have a big impact on some people's weekends plans, especially if you're on the coast. That's the story you'll have to pay attention to. So let's show you the wider view here. You can see beautiful weather, just some clouds today in the western Carolinas. But this is the mess, and, and that's the best way to describe this, honestly, because that's what it is. It's an old stalled cold front. This is the front from Sunday. These fronts, when they fester or sit over warm water, we see tropical development. We see this early in the season. We can see this in the middle of the season, and we certainly can see this late in the season that you can get what we call homegrown tropical systems and subtropical systems. We'll get into the difference here in a minute, but the thing you need to know, this is not going to be a big, powerful hurricane or anything, at least right now. But you can see that low pressure is trying to develop. There's clear signs of it along that front. It's a cluster of thunderstorms between, I would say, uh, the northern Bahamas and the Outer Banks and maybe the east coast of Florida there that's just kind of sitting there. The Hurricane Center, again, given it's still a 30% chance of tropical, subtropical development, the main reason it's not going to crank up and go crazy is even though there's really warm water there, there's a lot of dry air and shear. That's the thing about tropical systems. I think everybody gets caught up in warm water. Trust me, warm water is important. It's the fuel for storms, but it's like having high octane gasoline. You have to have an engine to stick it in for it to be useful. If you have dry air and wind shear, it doesn't matter how much warm water you have, you're not going to get a hurricane. The thing about warm water is once you get a system with light wind shear and not dry air, it can go crazy because it has tons of fuel. So again, there's three ingredients, lack of wind shear, um, moisture that you're going to need and warm water having one of them and not the other two still does not get you a tropical system that's why the probabilities are so low with this system let me show you some of the guidance here because one of the things i like to show is the uh, european ensemble's probability of tropical depression development you can see through sunday that the, the probabilities are probably 25 30 percent as we go into monday though <clears throat> those probabilities jump around 35 to 40 percent and you can clearly see the area we're highlighting here, um, eastern North Carolina, Outer Banks, and then moving to the northeast. So again, not a huge probability. And this is for just a tropical depression. So that's why you're seeing the probability stay low. 30% from the Hurricane Center makes completely sense. So when we look at the ensembles too, we can show you where every member develops a low pressure system. So I'm going to go into Saturday um, afternoon. We'll stop this around 1, uh, 1 p.m. Look at where they are. They're pretty far spread out. That's why there's some uncertainty in this setup because you've got some lows as far north as the Delmarva Peninsula and some off the southeast coast of Florida. So that's a pretty big spread. And I, that's kind of what you expect in this setup because honestly, I mean, when you look at this thing, where exactly are we going to see this low develop is key. The, the, the honing in or the, the mean is somewhere right about there. But until we know where it is, that's why we can't exactly tell you the exact impacts further west i mean you get the idea if you're here you're going to see impacts but back here probably less of an impact as we go to the west the rainfall forecast is pretty similar as well shows the heaviest rainfall likely along the coast and a tight gradient from a whole bunch of rain to very little rain so if you're in the charlotte area i-77 corridor maybe even central north carolina west the weekend isn't going to be all bad okay it could just be cloudy and breezy with a passing shower that's why it's not all doom and gloom if you're in the West. Though, honestly, we could use some rain with the dry conditions. Eastern North Carolina, a little certain, more certainty. It's at least going to be a wet weekend. And it's just a matter of how much. So let's get into that future cast. All right, the first model we're going to look at is a short-range model. It's the NAM 3 for folks that are into modeling. But I like to use short-range guidance. And the NAMs tend to go a little crazy with uh, QPF or precipitation. But I'm not so much looking about how bright the returns are on the radar. I'm really looking about the location because it is a model based here in the United States and in North America and does a pretty good job on location and timing sometimes. Not so great with the intensity or amount of precipitation. But as we get into tomorrow, we can clearly see we've got low pressure forming off the southeast coast and we're already starting to see signs of that today as we go into early friday you can see that moisture starts to spread inland now back here in charlotte you're thinking oh it's going to rain friday not so fast the air is really dry on the northwest side of this system 
we're going to have dry air still wrapping in dew points are in the 50s so a lot of this is not going to reach the ground i think the gradient is going to be somewhere right in here but what that's going to do when you have cloudy skies northeast winds and rain falling into dry air it tends to cool the air off and you might even almost get like a little bit of a wedge set up here so this is two o'clock friday afternoon you can see the coast yeah this is looking pretty soggy inland probably not so much but probably pretty windy let's go a little further into the future so this go around, we'll look at a global model, which has a little bit longer range, but also less resolution. You can see very similar setup on Friday. This is Friday morning. Uh, and notice the lack of rain back to the west. That's that's the NAM. Remember I said the NAM goes crazy with rainfall. That's, you know, that's kind of what you expect. That's a bias that we know as meteorologists in the, in the models. That's why if you have got if you have tools like this, you have to know how to use them. OK, not everybody knows what they're looking at. So here's the uh, the uh, GFS Europeans a little bit further south, but they're kind of similar in the timing. You see it pushing up to the northeast. This is Friday night. We'll go into Saturday morning. So Saturday morning is probably the most intense. We see this low pressure system with a band back to the west. Remember, it's going to be pretty breezy here the whole time on Saturday. It starts pushing northeast during the day on Saturday. By Sunday, it's heading up towards the Chesapeake and then pushing northeast. And Sunday might not be bad. Late in the day, we might see the dry air wrap around. But you kind of get the idea there that it's going to be a pretty quick moving system. It's taking forever to develop. And once it does, it's actually going to drift to the north. So a little bit of good news there. Now, let me turn off the model guidance uh, real quickly. And we'll kind of go into some of the uh, rainfall probabilities, because I think for eastern North Carolina, uh, this could be a pretty good soaking event. I'm going to turn on the, uh, the the day three rainfall, excessive rainfall forecast. And you could see we've already got a 10 to 15 percent chance, which is the medium risk for flash flooding along the coast um, out towards the east. So that's a pretty high probability already on day three. We don't have the day four and five here, so I'll have to switch products quickly. So I hopped over to the um, you basically the uh, WPC page. So there's what I just showed you on the other map. But let's go into Saturday and Sunday. So it's really, you know, I would say Friday into Saturday, we see that slight risk of flash flooding along the coast. So we've got time to watch this. This is the good news. I'll turn the, the radar and satellite back on here real quickly. And just so you could see where this system is. There it is down to the southeast. We'll keep an eye on it. Not a huge system, but definitely could be a soaker for eastern North Carolina.